thank you Mark Tisha for the introduction and before I start I want to acknowledge uh, my advisor Dr. Harry Gomez Capitan for being stuck here together with us and I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry and also my friend thank you for coming and then uh, we will enjoy our uh, our presentation especially this one I hope you can enjoy because I hope not so many writing, but we will, you will see the, some picture that maybe something, hopefully it can be interesting for you. Okay, actually this is uh, not exactly a uh, whole of the, my dissertation. This is a uh, part of my thing because of my, because of my dissertation is a uh, first step of my thing for this one. So, my title for my presentation today is The Deal Conservation Program in Indonesia. Saving the Timor Deal, Sarkus Timorensis. So, uh, we will start <coughs> with the looking up of the Republic of Indonesia. Uh, Republic of Indonesia, as we know, is uh, an archipelagic country. I think it's the most archipelagic country because we have uh, 17,508 islands. With the uh, land area is about one. 1,919,440 square kilometer and it could have been the, one of the 70 mega diversity countries. So let's make a diversity countries. Actually, all in all in the world we have 17 starting from United States up to Indonesia and Philippines. And the mega diversity countries is uh, countries that contain about 2 or 70 to 80 percent of our planet's biological world. So besides that, Indonesia also including one of the 25 global global biodiversity hotspots. So in all around the world they have 25, including Indonesia and Philippines. So a global biodiversity hotspot. They have a biologically rich country suffering the large number of endemic species treated by the various pressure, but the pressure we will see later on. And one of the hottest of the hotspots in terms of high vulnerability and high irreplaceability uh, wildlife. So, Indonesia is really rich with the biodiversity with 515 species mammal, with 36% of them is endemic. 121 species butterflies, more than 600 species reptile, 1,519 species birds, and 28% of them is endemic, and 270 species amphibia, and the last is 8,500 species of fish. Maybe some of you is confusing why you are animal scientist, but you know about this. Because my minor is web studies, and actually some people say to me that you are crazy. In Indonesia, some of my friends say that I am crazy because of you are animal scientist where you study about this. Actually, still many cow, many carabo that you can learn, but you study about it. But I will, with my team, this one, I hope I can uh, really help to the other people, and especially for the poor family. So this is the condition of Indonesia. Come some of the Indonesia, especially in Borneo. Indonesia daily calorific rate is the high, uh, the second highest after Brazil. Next after, uh, before Cameroon and Malaysia. So we can see what is this. Do you know this one? Orangutan. Yes, this is orangutan. This is the condition of orangutan that really, if you read the news, if you uh, watch the television, you can find that many orangutan killed in uh, Borneo because of uh, they won't open the farm area so really the decreasing habitat because of illegal logging, illegal trading and hunting developing and mining, burning, disaster and also infectious disease and etc. is really decreasing the population of wild animals how about the conservation status of the some of the wildlife animals in Indonesia? the first I want to say to the most uh, critically endangered animal in Indonesia is the Badak Perjula Satu, or we can call it Pinesaurus sondaicus. It's including in critically endangered in status in IUCN and appendix one in CITES. This is the picture of the Badak Perjula Satu. It's more on 
uh, Sumatera dan Jawa. The second is Orangutan Sumatera, Pongo Adelie, critically endangered in Asia and are very useful in sites. And also Orangutan in Borneo, Pongo Pigeonus, is endangered in Asia and are very useful in sites. This is the orangutan that still beautiful, different with the other one before. And this is the baby of the orangutan. Now this is the one that really hunting by some people and they will sell it to the illegal trade. And the next is about the Timor deer. Actually, the condition of Timor deer is still in vulnerable in Ayushian. But when we talk about vulnerable, it's already nearly to the endangered and critically endangered. So we really need to consult, even though the site has still put it in the appendix number two. So this is the deer that, uh, so deer have the, uh, have the seasonal, seasonal breeding. When they have been, they without the antler for the milk, they will not be mating because they cannot fight with the other male. And this is the condition when still with the seal uh, hair, so we call it felfet antler. And the last is when the strong antler, or we call it tronification antler. The Timor deer is medium size. Medium size sapling, or because it's uh, not really big, but they are medium. It actually, the reason I have one other big size uh, sapling is sambar deer or sapus unicolor, but the condition is not yet reliable still uh, enough for the population. So, the taxonomy of Timor deer is including phylum for data, so phylum vertebrata, plus malaria, order artiodactyl, so order ruminansia. Family Cepidae and species Cepus timorensis, or some some scientists call it Rusa timorensis. So Cepus timorensis <coughs> more common place in Java, lesser Sunda, including Bali if you know Bali, other than uh, Rusa Tenggara, Sulawesi, and Ambon or Molukan Island. So Indonesian government up to now, they still initiate the mid efficiency program starting 2005. They want to uh, make enough for the mid, uh, cow mid efficiency starting 2005. But in 2005, they are failing. Also, they make the new rule in 2010. They want to make the mid efficiency in 2010. But unfortunately, still fail. And now they make 2014 target. Uh, but now, we cannot say many things about cow because the reproduction condition of cow is uh, still not really uh, good in progress. That's why actually we need to uh, really concern to the some other source of the meat, including timor deer is a potential animal. Why timor deer is a potential animal? Because they have uh, as a medium size of the sapling, they have the for the bump of the or the male deer. They have the southern heads 96 up to 115 cm with the back of the body, uh, with the body length of the back is 140 to 161 cm and the body weight 43 to 80 kg. And the height, the southern head is 131 up to 149, body length is 90 to 105 and the body weight is 33 up to 79 kg. This idea, the meat of the Timor deer have the distinct taste or candy platform and really different taste with the other meat and also they are the best meat for the stick and also they have the low fat or lean meat and the high price 2.5 times compared with the no meat price the second they are actually is efficient with a small plant and minimum level and they have the special product, product is the fell fat you know that that is the second state of the antler, so the young antler. Normally they will cut, they will dry it, they will grind it, and they will make to be a medicine. The country that really improved in the production of the velvet is Korea. And really, uh, the velvet is will be really helpful for the uh, some problem of the uh, health, including the heart problem, including the hypertension, and including the men problem. And also they will use for the deer blood powder and also for the skin. So I try to make uh, my dream, I try to create my dream with this program, with my management analysis starting with the forest degradation is affected to the habitat losing for the wildlife, including Timor deer. That's why the conservation in situ is unsuccessful because the habitat losing. 
That's why they try to make the conservation ex situ or captive breeding. But the problem of the captive breeding is unsustainable program. Why? Because the main, um, many of the captive breeding run by the government will be stopped when the project ends. The second, for the private, they have problem because of when they already get the want to uh, harvest the result, uh, harvest the deal, they cannot do it because they uh, they cannot uh, follow the policy of the government. So later on we will see what's the those uh, policy. That's why the problem of funding, I want to offer uh, the conservation together with the utilization. Why? Because we can conserve if we have uh, much, uh, enough funding to support our conservation. And actually this statement uh, really support by the start of the law or act in Indonesia is uh, Act number 5, 1990. But the problem is, in Act number 5, 1990, they, uh, they only allow harvesting of the product of timor deer in the third generation. It means that for the first and second generation, we cannot uh, harvest for the timor deer. And the second, they have a rule, actually the introduction 10%. But two of these one cannot be fulfilled because have uh, some problem. Especially in harvesting product in third generation, the big problem is because they need the certificate of the deal that is really claim that they are the third generation, so you can harvest. If you cannot show the certificate, you cannot do anything. Even though you have uh, already run your farm 15 years, 20 years, but if you didn't have certificate, you cannot do anything with the immortal. So one of the farmers, one of the captive breeding that I use for my research, they said that every every year they need release money around ten thousand dollar, five uh, five thousand up to ten thousand dollar for only supporting the deer captivity breeding. The second problem is the low increasing population rate because of when they move from the natural habitat going to the captive breeding, they have many stress and that stress really uh, affected to the reproductive uh, condition of the timor deer. That's why I offer one big, one my dream, big dream is the deer conservation program. That's why I put it deer here, here because of uh, it's composed from the demonstration plot, enhancement of research, extension, and the last is reintroduction. So the goal of this program actually is the sustainable conservation of timor deer, and the objective for objective is give demonstration plot for communities about captive breeding of timor deer. So we will give the education to them how to how to uh, read the timor deer in captive breeding. The second is conduct studies on behavior of and reproduction of timor deer. Share the knowledge to the community about reading method and development of captive breeding of timor deer. And the last is support conservation program of timor deer in Indonesia through reintroduction program to the natural habitat. So I start with the demonstration plot. Actually, this demonstration plot. Uh, my plan is that we have the stock production, chin bag, and the same thing for the community with the two types, center and branch, yes, branches. So the center is the big farmer, the big activity building, and the branches will be the community farmer. So how many community farmers around there? They will to be your branches. And the minimum facilities must be in the activity building is feeding bar, resting bar, Drinking trough, pool, tills, and also forage field. So this is the uh, one that I'm already done with the farm, the Haji Yusuf Artono, uh, captivity breeding, Timor deer. That the one that I use also for my dissertation. The area they place in the district, Kudus Regency, Central Java Province of Indonesia. Where is the place? This is the Indonesia home. This is the Central Java. And also, this is from the Central Java, we take the Regency, Kudus Regency. And uh, from the Kudus Regency, we get this is the Dawei District. So, Dawei District is situated in the valley of Muraya Mountain, with the temperature 25 to 28 Celsius degree, centigrade. Area space is 56.13 square kilometer, with the population is 96 
1,127 people. Dominant vegetation is secondary forest and agriculture field, rice, sugar cane, and cassava. So the feeding uh, supply is really enough for them, especially when we already apply the technology later on. Alluvial soil is dominant, with the rainfall is 2,000 up to 2,500 milliliter, milliliter per year. And 55% of poor family, this is the one that we need to improve through this program with the community empowerment. And the recreational site, religious site, Chol, and natural site, Montel, Water, Paul, and Muria Monte. So, this idea, it will be really helpful for this program later on because of the extension program. We will see later on. Dominant hierarchy. 
So the aggressive behavior of melting molten. The pool this one, they will going out to the pool, they will taking a bath in this pool, and after that, the, this pool have a problem. What's the problem of this pool? Because unfortunately, the behavior, behavior of Timordin, they need get the dirty body before fighting and before mating. That's why after they are taking bath here, they will going down and will be wallowing or doing in the soil to make the body dirty. This is really the important. This is really the important behavior that we really need to concern because if not, they will have a stress, social stress. The second, they will, they will do the ramping antler because of they cannot do in the trees, so they do to the kids and the, to the fans. And it's commonly done by the alpha male or the winner, the, the first round of the dominant hierarchy. Why? Because of they want to show the dominancy. After that, when they do like this, as one other male will come. So starting with the expression of the trip. So they will express the trip through uh, coming up, uh, coming to near or for the under. And after that, they will do the uh, head down. So the head will be going down, and they are ready to lock the under. After that, <coughs> they will start pushing each other and start fighting. So this is the frequency of some aggressive behavior of melting or and resulting in, because some in one case is for male, so we have alpha male, beta male, sub and ordinate one male, and subordinate one two male. So in here we can see that the frequency, the most frequent fighting and aggressive behavior is for in alpha male. They are really the winner. And the beta male is really the opponent of the alpha male. They will fight each other long 43 days, I was observed for my research. In other, on other hand, for the S2 male or subordinate 2 male, they will really rare to fight. Even though we cannot fight, found really fight in here. How about for libido behavior? Libido behavior is the behavior shown by the male when they want to, go to, uh, to be mating. So this the one that I saw, I want to say to you that this is the important thing. I just I just recognize this one after I want to uh, will finish my study. Because when I put some water in the soil, they really like to go there. Better, uh, more like, uh, like, uh, more like go there compared with the pool. So even the pool, the pool is full with the water. But when we put water in the soil directly, they will go there. So this is the that they done. They will make a dirty body. And do you know when the condition of male or deer already dirty? After that, they will spray urine to the tummy, and after that, they will follow the female. When the female, when the female unfortunately reject, they didn't want to receive the male. The male will be coming again to the pool, to the muddy mud area, and they will following again and spray urine again. And actually, this is not not yet part of my research, but I hope later on I can do this research. It's connecting with the pheromone hormone. So the other libido behavior is roaring. They will shouting with the high tone, and will be uh, make the holding of harem of the female. And also this one, we call it flagman. Flagman is the condition when the male inhale very deep, and the lip. Upper lip will be curl, curly, make the curly position, like the smelling something. Especially happen after the female urinate. The other libido behavior is crowning, especially done more by alpha male. They do the crowning and walk along the around the kids to showing the dominancy. Sometimes they can form the uh, the dry grass and some other. How about the female Timordir? Actually, estrus behavior and female Timordir commonly done by the salting, male waving, and male seeking. How they do the male seeking? They will walking along the fence, going back and forth, and try to look for the male. Unfortunately, when the male didn't show the res response to the female, So they will do the bisexuality. 
So female with female. They will mostly each other between female because of no response from male. So as the behavior of female timortil, actually when I was uh, observed, they have 20.03 days in average with the length of estrus 45.07 hours. And the estrus cycle day duration and length of estrus is strained from 19 to 21 days and 30 to 56 hours respectively. The other estrus behavior of female timortil is urination. This is the time when the male follow when the female not yet receive the male, they will more frequently urinate. When they will more frequently urinate, the female just done, I'm oh sorry, the male just showing the behavior of flatman. They stop and they will not follow anymore. Along, uh, around two or three hours, they will try to follow again. If still more frequent, they will stop again. That's the one that then better me. About the mating behavior of Timothy, start with following. Actually, following is all along the day, they can be until uh, maybe 10 to 11 hours, but they stop, stop. Nah? So, continuing, when they are more frequent, they will stop and they will continue to follow again. <coughs> After that, this is kissing. They will kiss it as the, especially starting from the, starting from the upper uh, front body going to the, around the uh, genital area. After that, they will sniffing. The male will be sniffing the female, especially in the genital area. After that, flamen, especially when they are urinate. And after that, new nudging and starting with erection in here. And after that, they will mounting. And this is the position of intercourse. When the really the cheek of the male put in the upper body of the female. And after that, after finish intercourse, they will stop for a while time around 3 to 5 minutes and they will, we call this one is refractory period. Whatever with the subordinate male, with open with the loser, the loser will do bisexuality, more over them. So they will, they cannot have a chance to mating with the female. That's why they do with bisexuality. The next my research is about phenotypic characteristic. So I will, I will start with uh, anesthesia. I help by the veterinarian from Ramunan Zoo. After that, we do the body weighing and also body condition score measurement. After that, in length of the body measuring, head of the body. After that, next circumference. Where I want to see the next circumference because some of the research said that. The alpha male will get the biggest next circumference because connecting with the testosterone. We will see the later, the result. After that, the chest circumference, testis circumference, because some research said also the testis circumference will be affected by the dominant hierarchy, and the testis volume. So we will see the replacement of the water, displacement of the water. What the result of the phenotypic characteristic? We can see in here that significant significance different only found in the next circumference especially in establishment of dominant hierarchy. So body condition score, body weight, and test circumference, no significant difference. Test is volume and circumference, so no significant difference. For the hematology, we start with the blood collection and the analysis with the represent, hemoglobin, and hematopoiesis, so no significant difference. It's, uh, it's mean that the dominant hierarchy did not affect it to the health condition of the team. Testosterone level, we need to see this one because of this is the male hormone. So we do the LSR test, and we resulting in a significant difference among hierarchy after establishment of dominant hierarchy. And we really see here, alpha male has the highest in increasing, but the beta male is the lowest. Why? Because they are always close with the alpha male. They are stressed, and the testosterone is decreased. And testosterone level really affected to the next circumference, because they really support them in uh, Enlargement of the muscular rate of the neck. For the semen collection, we start with the uh, electroejaculator and we get the result of the semen collection. And analysis of semen quality, microscopic and microscopic, this is the uh, spermatozoa. And the result is macroscopic, including follow, pH, consistency, smell, and color, 
and microscopic mass motility, scale motility, and probability left mass and concentration didn't show no, uh, so no significant difference. Abnormal spam found in this lizard includes spam with a tail, double head, double tail, spare head, small head, and giant head. This is the sample of small head. So the next. So the fifth, for fifth, we will see the chemical, biology, and physical treatment for post harvest. We will learn, really learn about the harvesting felfet. This is the one that done. So we will cut this felfet, and later on they will dry it, and they will uh, make the medicine for this one. And it's very expensive. So the next is the for the field laboratory. So. Research also will be helped for the student, university, including captivity, feed, reproduction, and also animal health. So I hope if we can be done with this program, so many university students can be learned from this area. The next is about extension. So this start with community encouragement. I want to show it to you the certificate. So like the birth certificate, in the deal, you need to have this one also. This is so that the generation F1, it's mean the second generation. If you can claim that this is really the second generation, it means you can get the kid later on and they will to be the third generation. And you can use the third generation. But the problem in the, uh, in Indonesia now, they have a really poor of the recording. That's why this is the problem, we cannot claim the certificate. So this is why that I help to them to make the certificate and after that, after I come back with my PhD, I will continue that program and I hope I can support them better. The next is socialization about the deer conservation. So this is the sample of the program, Timor Deer, and Simulation Save Us Local. Later on, we will make the socialization to the community. So they will really awareness about the Timor Deer. The next is market building. We know that if we're waiting for the third generation, it's really far time, a long time. So I offer to them because they have the uh, recreation, recreational side. We can make the educational tour. We can offer to them with the tourism. I hope I have some tourism student in here. So I hope later on I can work with her to support my support my program. So we we'll make the educational tour package like this. So they can. They can open the tour, tour agency, so we, we will try to make like that. So we will try offer to student of the high school, elementary school, because they need to see what kind of the deer, what, what is the word deer. Sometimes educational, uh, sometimes elementary school they don't know about deer. So we need to ask them to make like a camping area, to make like a, a home, a hot well training and some other. Besides that, we will make a connection market, including this is sample from New Zealand, but later on we will try to make like this one. Especially when the harvesting product will be going on, we will really can be made like this. So the next is the late production. We will uh, try to start with selection with the vigorous, healthy, and with high fitness characteristic of animal. The second step, after we form them, uh, after we select them, we will offer them, we will place them near the place of the reintroduction. We will make the area there. We place in the area and we offer them one to two months to ensure the survival ability of the team working. So we will see the fit seeking, finding shelter, social, retreat and defense behavior, including we will try to put recording chip at the back of the neck. So when we release, we can control where's the position of the team working. And the next is the reintroduction, releasing in group. Why in group? Because it will be really helpful for them. And the nearby the water and food source. And the last, we will do the evaluation, direct and indirect, through the chip, recording chip, and also through the camera trapping and the other. So the final recommendation, recommended management for Timor did include demonstration plot, 
enhancement of reason, extension and reproduction. Ensure the conservation and utilization of Timur D. So we cannot take only one. We need to take both of them. Sustainable conservation for Timur D in Indonesia and the social limitation is basic habit of communities because some of them still hunting the deer. Some of them didn't want to get difficult to raise the deer. Easy to cow with cow, easy with the uh, good and also other. The next problem is legal limitation, unsynchronized policy. Why? Because Act number 5 is uh, released by the Forestry and Natural Resource Ministry. Actually, when they go to the third generation, they need to release to the Agriculture Department. But unfortunately, what happened? The uh, Forest and Natural Resource did not want to release to them. So they still fight each other in the level of bureaucracy. So that's why I want to do this one. I want to say to them that okay, we can do it if we really follow the rule. The last I want to acknowledge to Jesus Christ for this blessing. My parents, Mr. Subiano and my mother, Mrs. Samsiati. My advisor, Dr. Severino S. Capitan. Dr. C. Sansi Sevilla, Dr. Renato S. Vega, Dr. Pablo Pio Campo, Haji Yusuf Patono, and Tika Indragmanto is the one who honored the activity meeting, Mr. Henki Gotama and Ms. Selina Gotama, because they really helped me full for my for my writing in dissertation and also support my funding uh, research. Okay. Thank you. Already, that's uh, I think the human habit of the Indonesia, sir. 
you need to soil something and they will fall. So if the main demonstration plot with the center of this one success and they can sell the product, so they will fall. And the next, in Central Java now, we have 55 private cutting degree, but no one has the certificate. This is the first certificate that released by the BKSDA or the Center of the Natural Resource Ministry. So they know that, uh, and unfortunately the forestry department said to the owner, okay, maybe because of you are strong, you are the have the private company, maybe later on if you success to sell, you can also help to the other farm all around Central Java because they have 55 to sell their product also. So they are really waiting for this successful captivity building. So not only for this area, but also hopefully with the region of the Central Java. Maybe I hope this will be answered your questions. Thank you.